Hello and welcome to Monday Motivation. I am again in the middle of nowhere, somewhere between Bundaberg and Baffle Creek, which really is the middle of nowhere in Queensland. It's very hot, so I'm sort of locked in my car because I'm on a bit of a main road and there's quite a bit of traffic going past me. So this is not going to take very long because otherwise I'll expire. Um, I wanted to talk to you today about why you bother training your own horse and what the advantages are of doing so. I've had quite a lot of people say to me, oh, thank goodness, that people that have watched the free training that I've got available, which is up above um, the link. If you just go to canduequine.com, you'll find that free training there. That's a big trick. Um, and and you can have a look at that and that's all about tells you all about the reasons why you should train your own horse and um, and all the benefits to doing so and I've had a lot of people comment on those videos saying oh it's so great to see somebody that's promoting you know the training of your own horse rather than sending it out because people tell me I should send it out and and this sort of thing and it really is great once you start you won't stop you never look back once you start training your own horse and once you realize how simple it is and how much better for your horse it is as well so um, that was where I wanted to start. The other thing, I've had a couple of questions from somebody recently who's involved in the um, Kanda Wekwine online training and she's got two horses. One of them's an unstarted horse and the other one is a horse she bought recently to gain some confidence with and that's a very experienced, been there, done that horse um, that was described as, you know, pretty much bomb proof. You can do anything with this horse, it's bomb proof, which is an expression that really worries me when I hear that about a horse, because to me it sounds like it's really shut down. And anyway, this this girl began the education with the um, the youngster that hasn't yet been broken in and she started of course with the give to the bit work because that's where you build that nice bubble of communication which is what will take you forward and keep you safe and keep the horse nice and round and concentrating on you and the lesson that you're teaching and she said the youngster just picked it up like that it was fantastic and was traveling around her in a nice soft frame it was really relaxed and really attentive and it was fabulous. So she then went to teach exactly the same lesson to the um, the new horse that she bought, the confidence giver, the you know the um, the bomb proof horse, and that was really really very resistant. She said I needed a huge amount of pressure to get it to give at all, and even then it really didn't want to bend its neck. Um, and what's happened with this horse, and she said also that in the past, she's been riding the horse a lot, and to begin with, it was absolutely dead to the leg, so she'd have to kick it every stride. And if you've ever ridden a horse, that you have to make it work for every stride. It's exhausting, it's exhausting for you, and it must be awful for the horse. Imagine, you know, being kick, kick, kick on your side every stride that you need it to trot. But these horses, that are sort of bomb proof or um, you know really quiet have been systematically desensitized to pressure and that's what you've got to untrain and retrain and that it's very hard to do you know because these horses have taken themselves into this shutdown place where they really can't cope with any more pressure and they just switch off to it so you know, you've got to reintroduce pressure and you've got to take it sort of to that level which is just a little bit above because pressure is still your motivator. It's, it's a little bit above what the horse is comfortable with and then you can start bringing it down. But if say, let's say leg pressure, if that horse is ignoring your um, squeezing it as hard as you can with your legs, then you need more pressure to motivate that horse in the first instance to get it to change what it's doing and that's the really important thing to understand is that you're never going to be able to go in with a horse that's been systematically desensitized to pressure you're never going to be able to go in with less pressure you can't go in and say oh well how about we do this off a you know a feel of a rain because it'd be lovely but it won't work because the horse doesn't care about the feel of the rain because somebody has already said here's you know 50 newtons of pressure and I'm going to ride you with this all the time so for that horse you know the 
two newtons make no difference and it's it's a difficult thing to do but once you once you start and once you work out what it is you're trying to achieve and you're trying to resensitize your horse to pressure then it is achievable now this girl that I was talking about she's already got her horse working quite well with the leg now so what she's done is she's resensitized that horse to leg now with the give to the bit work she's got to do the same thing and resensitize the horse to bit pressure which is completely doable what you need to do to do that is to really break it down more for the horse and so what i suggested she do when she picked up pressure if she could get a little tiny movement you know not expect the horse to come around too far laterally just a little tiny movement and then reward for that the horse will then start to get the idea of the pattern and the horse then you can see them this light bulb moment going off on the horse's mind because oh if i move slightly this way all that pressure goes away or the small amount you've got goes away and the horse works out that it is actually in control of the pressure and it's a wonderful thing it's wonderful to see these shut down horses actually open up again and start to engage with learning so I say good on you good on you for doing that good on you for getting that horse and working with that horse and yes it can be frustrating to start with but just remember that you're dealing with a horse that's been taught something and systematically desensitize to pressure. Now your job is to systematically sensitize this horse back again. Bring it back to you. Bring it back into that bubble where you'll both be safe and you can go on and do some lots and lots of fun things, which you can't do now if your horse is shut down. So good on you and well done for having a go. And I look forward to hearing how you get on with that horse. And I will let you guys know as well when I get some good news from that person. All right, lovely to talk to you. And tomorrow I'll be coming to you from inside the training with Tuesday's training. Bye now.